Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I see a padre on stage. Uh, so let me start with a confession. I was extremely stressed. My wretched knee hobbles. My mind is perturbed, thinking that I'm going to have a wardrobe malfunction, which I just did in the green room. And I'm going to mess up this talk, and St. Joseph is never going to call me back again. And my heart is yearning to give all of you a talk that you can remember, recall, share. A simple, effective, efficient message. A golden nugget of wisdom that I want you to share with all of your friends and colleagues and loved ones so that you can beat cancer in the track. So with that confession, Father, can we move on? Yes, Father Charles says yes. I just met him in the ante room a couple of hours ago. Uh, so the topic at hand is keeping cancer at bay, simple, not simpler. And uh, when I look at cancer, I absolutely feel that this is a silent pandemic that has been ravaging humanity, especially in the last half of the 20th century, much before the word pandemic became colloquial in our parlance today in this world that we inhabit and live in. Now, cancer is as inevitable, as inescapable, as certain as death and taxes. So we better get aware of it. We better understand it and allow it to become a friend so that we can deal with it. Sorry, you have cancer. The three of the scariest words anybody can possibly hear for oneself or one's friend. But if wishes were horses, we would all be flying. Susan Sontag, who wrote this beautiful book in the 1970s, Illness as a Metaphor, talks about cancer as a disease that knocks. No, it doesn't. Cancer is a disease that enters without knocking. It is an unwanted house guest, a successful invader, a colonizer that just barges in. Only I know where my knee hurts. Only you know where your shoe pinches. The pain and pathos of those who suffer in silence with cancer or see their loved ones with cancer, only they know. And there's an old song from Simon and Garfunkel from the 1960s, if you're old enough to remember, that is me here in the audience and on the dais, the sounds of silence. A heart-touching rendition of the darkness that inhabits you within. Hello darkness, my friend. I'm here to talk to you again. As eloquently, Gardner Harris from the New York Times visited me a decade ago and wrote a very topical piece in the Times at that point in time to capture human interest stories. And some of the stories that came out of that interaction with patients were one of the most gut-wrenching experiences for me. So all of this is, is what I want to share with you today. Now, why the choice of this topic is, is because uh, cancer is a very complex business. It's very nuanced, it's very granular. And just this week, two centenarians who have had a lot of influence on my life moved on and met their maker. One was Charles Munger, the better half of Warren Buffet, the man behind Berkshire Hathaway, and the other was Henry Kissinger. Both uh, were very complex people straddling the last hundred years on this earth, negotiating the, the travels and the tribulations of this earth, but at the same time espoused the principle of simplicity in life, in investing, and diplomacy. And I think the message from cancer has to be simple, but not simpler. And that's what we will embark today on this journey. 
So over the next 15 minutes, what I'm trying to going to do is that life is uneven and unfair. Okay? Be ready for it. It will happen. And there's a lot of young people out there in the audience. Buckle up. It wasn't meant to be fair and even. In this roller coaster that we call life, cancer is a clear and present danger for all humanity. It is an inescapable, inevitable truth that will hit some of us. 40% of us will develop cancer. Imagine 40% of us here. A third of us will eventually succumb to cancer in 2023. Those numbers are stark. So let's get real. Now, you know, COVID and joint replacements and stent therapies and vaccines and cataracts have spoiled us silly for choice. We tend to think of cancer as there's going to be a magical bullet that is going to cure cancer. Well, get real. A universal cure of cancer is not happening anytime soon, and we will go into those reasons why this remains a mirage. Oh, Dr. Gupta, that is such a dreary outline. No, it's not, because there is more than a silver lining at the end of the tunnel, and I am going to share with you those nuggets of actionable wisdom that will empower you to become the CEO of the most precious asset in the world, which is your own health. Okay, so welcome to the master class on how to become CEOs, asset, health. No liabilities here. Okay, now, whenever bad things happen, disease, disability, destruction, divorce, death, to somebody else, we internally have a sigh of relief. Thank God, it's not me. Be that as it may today, there is some day going to come when this will hit you as well. Okay? And I think this quote from Roger Lowenstein is very telling. There is nothing like health to blind you from the possibility of illness. The idea of this talk today is to take off your blinders, to understand that this will come, that day will come to you or to your loved one. It's important to understand that. Being forewarned is being forearmed, being forearmed is being prepared. Being prepared means you are ready for the challenge. Okay, everything is fine and dandy until it is not. Risk is what you don't see coming. And I'm going to illustrate that with a couple of analogies. The man you see in the picture here is the famous magician, Harry Houdini. Harry Houdini was a magician an amateur boxer, a stuntman who used to regale audiences with his bravura and superhuman stunts. He used to routinely invite people and say, punch me in my belly, and people would, with all their might, and he would stand there smiling. A man of great courage. Then one day, some students visited him backstage, and one of them, Gordon Whitehead, whose picture you see in the center, did a sucker punch. He punched Harry Houdini, the great, without notice. Harry Houdini doubled up in pain, his appendix perforated, and two days later, Harry Houdini died. The invincible Harry Houdini died. Two days later, sucker punched by an 18-year-old kid from McGill University in Canada. Now, what does that tell you? Everything is fine until it isn't. Risk is what you don't see coming. Let me tell you another example. Everybody can relate to this movie, correct? Some words have a way of going down in the history in a wrong manner. And when RMS Titanic hit the iceberg in 1912 and was bobbling on the Atlantic Ocean in the middle of the night, the vice president of the White Star Line said, the Titanic is in no danger, the boat cannot sink. Four hours later, with 1,500 souls on board, Titanic sank. 
So everything is fine until it's not. Oh, you know, Thanksgiving was just there last past week, and I would imagine Padre celebrated it, as did some of the other people as well. So here is a story about Turkey. Not the country Turkey, but the food Turkey, and the farmer. So the farmer used to dutifully feed the turkey every day. So every day the turkey had an expectation that food is going to come. And the turkey is going to feel satiated. Then one day, on the Wednesday afternoon, just prior to Thanksgiving, the farmer did come. But this time, he was armed with an axe. The hope of the turkey was belied, and turkey became Mr. Turkey. This beautiful example comes from an old book of Nasim Taleb, Fooled by Randomness. And what it essentially talks about is, let's not be turkeys just because you have never died before is no reason to believe that we are immortal. The point that I'm trying to make through all these analogies is risk is what you don't see coming. Everything is fine until it happens, until the shit hits the roof. So get real. Uh, we'll skip this slide. Risk, I understand this is a commerce college. When you buy stock of a company, you buy with the expectation that it's going to rise up not fall down, but you know, more often than not, it does fall down. And what is surprising, we are caught blindsided. Life is like that. Healthy today is not equal to healthy tomorrow. No cancer today is not equal to no cancer. Get real. Murphy's Law 101, existential observation we should all be familiar with. If anything can go wrong, it will. And body is one such machinery. 37 trillion cells. 37 followed by 12 zeros. 10 times the market cap of Apple. That number of cells. So if you have that number of moving parts in a body, don't you think something is going to mess up? Surely, hell yes. And that's the existential observation we need to make peace with. Uh, great advice from the House of Confucius. For the longest time, I used to call him Confucius. And uh, there is no richest man in the graveyard. They're all the same. The bottom line is, take care of your health when you can. You might not get a second opportunity. Cancer, the second part of the talk, cancer is a clear present danger for all humanity. Prepare for the risk of cancer. Oh, let me ask the gentleman, do you think you are at a risk for cancer? Uh, yes, no, I don't know. Uh, he says, I don't know. The answer is, yes, you are at a risk of cancer. And let me articulate that risk for you, young man. The overall risk for cancer in general for the entire population, and this is largely a Western cohort, is one in three. Out of three people, one will get cancer and one will succumb to cancer. Is everybody awake now? Yes, thank you. Uh, the numbers in India, however, are somewhat better. One in 2022, 20, okay, have a risk of cancer, developing before the age of 75. But more importantly, most of the cancer deaths occur in the age group of 30 to 69 when we are most economically productive. We always think cancer is a disease of the elderly. My grandfather, who was 85, had it. No, not really. There is an epidemic rise of cancer in the age groups less than 50, and it's reaching epidemic proportions. 30% of all my patients are young. Okay, this is the internet culture, the YOLO culture. What happens in one puny minute on the internet? 500 hours of video on the YouTube, 70 million messages on WhatsApp. Okay, you got this guys? One minute, one puny minute. Now let's look at the world of cancer, what's happening in one puny minute. In every year, we are looking at about one crore, more than 10 million deaths from cancer. Each year contains about half a million, five lakh change minutes. So if you do the math, and I have done this math, the number of deaths from cancer in this world, per minute is 
close to 20. The numbers for India stand at about two per minute. By the time the TED Talks are over at SJCC today, 3,000 people would have lost their lives to cancer. That's 10 aircrafts getting crashed simultaneously every day throughout the year. Do I have the attention of the audience now? Yes, that's the risk. COVID, we talk about COVID as the pandemic. The total toll of COVID from the WHO website as of 9th November was 0.7 million or 70 lakhs. And I just told you, cancer was causing 10 million deaths year on year with a CAGR of about 9 to 10%. I think this is a commerce college, everybody would understand a CAGR. Okay, in a restaurant called Life, you will, or your loved one will, the odds are stacked in your favor, be served by a dish called Disaster de la Cancer. That's French, obviously, I'm snobbish. So what is the recipe for this disaster? If the sous chef was none other than Robert Weinberg, the legendary molecular biologist at MIT, then he would say, the fact that you have a body which has 37 million moving parts and four million of them are actually dividing at any given point in time, something is going to mess, get messed up. And that mess up is nothing but Murphy's Law. To this, all you need to do is to add the zest of your risk factors as personal behavior and spice it up with, garnish it with luck and voila, you have cancer. So this is the cancer equation. But do we understand cancer completely? Not really, we don't. And I think I allude to Churchill who said about Russia in a different context, obviously in the 1930s, cancer is like a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. We don't really understand cancer. It's like the elephant and six visually challenged people, each of them trying to make or understand one part of the elephant as a part of the whole truth, but not really the complete truth. A quote from the Isha Vasya Upanishad is very telling, although said in a different context, he who knows, knows that he does not. The true knower knows that he cannot know him in his infinitude. While that can be said of God in various ways, I think it's as true for cancer. Oh, why is there no universal cure for cancer? The progress of cancer is slow, very slow. Over a 29, 30 year period, we are looking at a decrement of about 15%, which is not zero, but certainly much less than what we would hope for. We are still waiting for miracles. And this is a very old, profound Sidney Harris cartoon, which tells you that science is imperfect and incomplete about cancer at this point in time. We are waiting for miracles and cancer treatments while they work. And I met a gentleman in the audience who is a success story about cancer treatment. When cancer treatments works, they seem like miracles and they truly are. But we cannot treat our way out of this disease. The caseload is so humongous, the toll on human life so great that we have to find a way to prevent it, to avoid it. And that is what I call as reframing the entire problem of cancer. Oh, why haven't we cured cancer yet? You always, I always get this question. We have put a man on the moon. We have split the atom. COVID was a success story. My 97-year-old uncle had a bypass surgery. Why can't we cure cancer? Something is being hidden. The answer is this. And Sharon Bagley was a science reporter for the Boston Globe who uh, lost her life to cancer several years ago. Why can't we cure cancer? Because one dumb tumor is smarter than 100 oncologists put together. Oh. Oh, really? And why is that? Why is that? The answer is, you can fight an enemy you can see. You can fight an enemy whose mind you can predict. You can fight an enemy who has a limited arsenal. Unfortunately, 
cancer is not that enemy. And that is why it is a very tough, tough foe. I always like to say, cancer is playing chess while we are playing checkers or Ludo. It is planning 10 moves ahead. It has an infinite ability to evolve and change and morph in unpredictable ways. So cancer is not a unitary one disease. It is a coagulum, a complex morass of several diseases put together. So you can't have a one-shot cookie cutter cure for cancer. We are all familiar with Hercules and how he slayed the dragon, right, the hydra. Every time he cut off a head, two more sprung out, then eventually he slayed all those nine heads and burned the neck. Cancer is that hydra with infinite reserves of armamentarium. Oh, Dr. Gupta, this is such a dreary talk. Can you leave us with something positive? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely, because I am going to tell you that there are nuggets of wisdom that you can put to use tomorrow morning that will beat cancer and stop cancer in the tracks. No miracle solutions. I am not a snake oil salesman. I lay the power of control in you. Oh, if we talked about Charlie Munger, this is a commerce college. What would hashtag Charlie Munger do? This is obviously a spoof on what would Jesus do, Father? Inversion is the principle of inversion. We need to invert the problem, approach it from a different angle. Instead of looking at it, how do I treat cancer? How do I cure cancer? How do I avoid cancer? How do I prevent cancer? So we need to reframe the problem, right? So we normally do this, forward thinking, how do I succeed? Charlie Munger told us, invert, invert, baby, invert, which means how to avoid failure. List out the things I need to do. Stop watching WhatsApp, stop watching Netflix, don't go out with friends. Things to do to avoid failure, which would translate into success. A, a, a very beautiful slide from my friend Vishal Kandelwal. All I want to know is where I'm going to die, so I will never go there. Charlie Munger and you see a man with a selfie. Avoiding stupidity, avoiding cancer, is as important as seeking brilliance. Uh, so what will, what is stupidity? Behavioral factors, occupational factors, metabolic factors, and environmental factors. And you see, what will kill you mostly is bad behavior. So the power of checking that lies within you. I think the slides haven't come out. Well, so how do I avoid cancer? How do, how do you avoid getting killed, which is inversion? How do you get cancer? Invert it, and then you say, how do I avoid cancer? And this is the mnemonic that I want to leave you with. Every day, like a mantra, like a psalm, read it, A to I, nine letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I, alcohol, none. There is no alcohol in life. Not even any, oh, we're taking only soft drinks. No, 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 there ain't no alcohol. Alcohol is a major risk factor. Body weight optimized, no smoking, a healthy diet with greens, lack of ultra-processed foods, whole grains, exercise, face protection, go and have fun. Nobody's saying don't have fun. I see a lot of youth, and they say, oh, it means we're going to live a saintly life? No, go and have fun. Without these as well, you can have fun. Injections, 30% of all cancer cases can be prevented by vaccines. There you go. This is the cancer reduction equation. And 50% of all cancers can be detected early. A lot of them can be prevented completely. All in all, half the cancer load would be over if we prevented them or detected them early. It's not easy. Duryodhan said this to Krishna in the Pandav Gita. I know what is right, but I don't feel like doing it. I know. I like to smoke. Well, obviously Duryodhana was not smoking. Morpheus said this to Neo in the Matrix. I can only show you the door, and you are the one that has to walk through it. I cannot take your responsibility. You have to do 
what you got to do so that you can do what you want to do. That is Kung Fu Panda, wisdom of Shifa. Well, I don't have Kung Fu Panda, but I do have a Yoda for you as I leave the stage today. Do or do not do, there is no try. Because this is a wonderful life. And you owe it to yourself to be the best that you can possibly be. And I leave you with this quote from the Upanishads. You are what your deep driving desire is, as is your deep driving desire. So is your will, as is your will, so is your deed. As is your deed, so is your destiny. Equally so, I leave you with another quote from the New Testament of the Bible, uh, from the Galatians 6, 7. As ye sow, so shall you reap. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for having me here today.